How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays with Jim Valley and Sundays with me. Man, what a night last night. AEW full gear. Most of the time, this is the last pay-per-view of the year for them, but uh-uh. We got another one coming in a month, a little over a month. We're going to talk about this show. Interesting. It was a very different AEW pay-per-view as far as formatting goes. There was a lot of storyline-driven matches. MJF retained. We're going to break this all down. But it was a bizarre storyline that played out throughout the entire night, starting from the pre-show all the way to the end. A lot of swerves. A lot of stuff happened here. We're going to talk about this. Hangman and Swerve. Talk about Swerve. Holy moly. Hangman and Swerve. That was something I did not expect. <laughs> I mean, I knew it would be a great match. I knew it was going to be, you know, it's a death match. I'm going to do great. I did not expect to see uh, what I saw. We got two new women's champions. Also, Ronda Rousey, Ring of Honor. Ronda was at a revolver, revolver show on Friday, uh, on Saturday, on Thursday, then showed up at Ring of Honor at the tapings. We're going to break that down and what that means. Also, if we have time, a preview to Survivor Series and War Games. A lot of stuff going on here, guys. A lot of changes. Also, who was the mystery man that Tony was signing? I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize to a lot of you. Kind of alluded to it on Twitter. Then I spoke about it. People were upset. They were upset for numerous reasons. We'll break that down. When we come back, all this and more Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here with me, Andrew Zarian on Sports Byline. Let's go right into the show. Zero hour. Start at 6.30 Eastern. Earlier than I thought. I thought it was starting at 7. I'm getting messages like, oh, you know, the show's on. I'm like, what do you mean? It's 6.30. I still got 30 minutes. You know, I thought this was a good pre-show. Eddie Kingston defeated Jay Lethal to retain the ROH title. This was a really good match. Great. Uh, I mean, it was fantastic. I had a, I had a really good time watching. Eddie's a great Ring of Honor champion. I, you know, he fits that role wonderfully. I thought this was a really good match. Yeah, it's Sanjay and Satnam Singh and Karen and Jeff outside. Eddie retained. We also got Claudio Castagnoli and Buddy Matthews. Another fine match on the pre-show. But the big story here was the following match. MJF and Samoa Joe against the Guns for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. I, I want to talk about the title positioning in this company because it is a lot of titles. It really is, if you think about it. A lot of people argue that if you compare it to WWE, they're doing the same thing. Multiple titles. Everybody has something. I don't know. I'll get your thoughts on it. We'll break that down. So, story was that uh, Adam Cole came, came down to the ring mid-match to help distract the guns, right? After the match, Samoa Joe leaves the guns while they attack MJF. And they pilmanize him. They pilmanize his leg. To the point that he gets stretchered out. He gets put in the ambulance and he's screaming to Adam Cole, don't let them take my title. And that's how the pre-show ends. So now you're thinking, okay, what, what are they going to do here? What, what's, the, what's the plan? Adam Cole's limping around. Obviously, he's not. He has one leg. Now, MJF has one leg. They lead this B. We got to the main card here, which I thought was great. Uh, you know, I, I said something while the pre-show was happening. MG, our producer. Was I wrong that that building, and it was no knock at AEW production, that building should not have been booked for this show? You got almost, I think it was almost 12,000 people in that building. All I'm looking at is a giant wall with a handful of people on that hard camera shot. They did their best to do angled shots, and you're seeing the crowd with other shots. But, you know, majority of the time, that hard camera is what represents your show. And it looked terrible with that wall in the Kia Forum. Were you affected by it too? Or was that just me getting obsessive over it? 
Yeah, well, you were a little obsessive. I was laughing when you said that. And I was like, but then I started thinking about it. You were right to a point because if you looked up in the above in the Senate stands, there was a lot, those red uh, steps, yeah. they stood out and it made it look almost empty. I think that's, as the show went on, I got used to it and it was fine. It was not a big deal. It was fine as the show went on, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I eventually mm -hmm. got over the crooked exit sign. That was hanging on the wall. But <laughs> listen, you know, and my point was this, right? 12,000 people in that building. AEW doesn't do 12,000 every week. They do fine. 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, fine. That's an okay number to be at. But now you have an opportunity to show something larger than life, right? A jam-packed building. Legitimately. When you pull out, when they do that jib shot where they pull out, it looks great. But that wall is so big, and people are like, oh, it's like the garden. It's not like the garden because the garden is not a wall. It's just a tunnel, and there's seats above it and, and below it. It was just a weird setup. That building is strange. I'm not a fan of it, but they did their best it, to shoot this. It wasn't. It, it wasn't really a wall. It was just curtains. Those red, the red was. Is curtains. that curtains? Yeah, that was curtains, and people. And what's were walking, behind it? I noticed. It, I, I guess just backstage, or you know, they they wanted to make it look closer i guess it yeah it just took a time to get used to it once once we got into the show it didn't bother me anymore nah, it was fine it was fine it just at first it's a little daunting when you're looking at it and you're thinking okay well they got a packed building and you can't even show them off you can't show that crowd off either way show up and up adam copeland sting and darby allen they all came out dressed like stings right they were sting variants and edge variants and darby variants right they all merged into Pretty one much. character. And Ric Flair, I it's wanted actually... Ric Flair to come out with the face paint. That's what I wanted. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? Has he ever done the face paint? Has he ever done the Sting face paint? I can't remember. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. Oh, I'd love to see it. Mm. Uh, Wit Sting defeated the Patriarchy. TNT champion Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, and Nick Wayne. There was a spot at the end where uh, Flair and Christian went at it. Flair punched him, chopped him. He got poked in the eye and low blowed by Christian. So Christian was ducking Adam throughout this entire match, right? That was the big thing here. Yeah. He didn't want to mm -hmm. wrestle him. He was yeah. ducking him the whole time. The match ended with him running away and it being a two on three and uh, Edge staying and Darby uh, getting the advantage. Edge. They got, the win, Nick Wayne, right? yeah. they got they the win got on Nick Wayne, right? Yeah, they got the win on Nick Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. So this is continuing. Obviously, this is leading to Adam Copeland and, and, and Christian, maybe for the title, maybe not for the title. I don't know. But it's leading to something here. I thought this was a fun Probably opener. revolution, right? No. Uh, well, maybe revolution. Maybe whatever oh. they do oh, okay. in January, if yeah. they do something in January. Maybe uh, mm -hmm. December at the Nassau Coliseum. Yeah. Yeah. For, I keep forgetting about that show, and you just mentioned. I would it. imagine. I would imagine Sting would have to wrestle at that Coliseum show because it would be the last time he's at the Coliseum, and WCW used to run the Coliseum every now and then. Makes sense. It makes sense for him to be there. We got Orange Cassidy with Hook defeating John Moxley with Wheeler Yuta for the AEW International Title. A lot of people thought that Moxley was going to win this, but the story was that. Cassidy had to hit him with everything at the end. How many times did he hit five, his moves? Five, five times? Five orange punches. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, it, and it finally took him out for the win. I thought this was another really good match. Mm. Really, really good match. There was a lot of criticism about the show throughout, uh, you know, throughout the night on Twitter. That, it, that was interesting to me how there were a lot of things that people didn't like. And I'm curious if it was the fact that that MJF angle confused people for like the entirety Maybe, yeah. of that show whatever the you know three four hours of that show five hours of that show um and it just kind of resonated with everything else because you know the way that i watched it i watched bits and pieces because it was my wife's birthday yesterday and then i caught up this morning on everything so i didn't have a lot of the outside noise happening for half the show you know half of it i watch live and the other half i watch after this so, there was a moment, actually, after the Sting match that, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit because it's not in the notes, Tony Schiavone comes out, and he's about to I award. Have it, I have it with the match. Oh, you it's have it with, with the, the match. match. Okay. 
So, yeah. mm-hmm. but you can talk about it now. It okay. So before earlier, uh, before this match, right? Uh, there was a segment where they were going to award the title to Jay White, but Adam Cole comes out on crutches. And you could hear the crowd just gasp, like, and the don't crowd do was that. gasping. You're not taking yeah. our main event away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the crowd mm-hmm. didn't like didn't like it. And also, it is interesting to see Adam Cole. Adam Cole, you know, he doesn't look great. You know what I mean? No. He looks yeah. very unkempt. He looks very unkempt. <laughs> yeah, he has he has a straggly beard. <laughs> you know, he's on crutches. Uh, and, and he comes out, and the crowd, like, it's almost like, no, 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 no. Don't mess this up. We want to see MJF. They've built the story for so long. So Adam Cole comes out and says he's going to take Max's spot. First of all, I don't know how you could do that. You know, let, let's talk about wrestling logistics here, right? Obviously, Max can't compete because he's not going to be medically clear because of his injury. This guy obviously has a broken foot or whatever the hell he did. He's not going to be able to wrestle him. So they announce that Adam Cole on one leg is going to defend MJF's world title. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, this is how they take the title off of him. He never loses it, but he loses it. Interesting. That did not turn out to be the case. Which I, I, I find interesting that they played it out like this. Listen, a little convoluted. I agree with you guys. You know, I don't like my pay-per-views muddied. I like it, I like it very straightforward. But they were trying something different here. We got to go to a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to continue this. Because I want to get your thoughts on everything else that happened on the show, including the main event. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Let's pick up where we left off. Timeless Tony Storm with Luther. I like that Luther is like her butler now. (laughs) It's so absurd. This death match, you know. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's such a good dynamic that works, right? It is. It is. It's, it's a great works. dynamic. It's a great. I love the gimmick, and man. I love it. I, I love that she's able to do this. They weren't using him that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they weren't using him, and he can take bumps for her and uh, take. If we saw in the match, Kendall stick shots. It, it works. Okay, so yeah. he, here's, you know, what I I would have loved to see is you know Tony does her whole thing, he, she does her gimmick, and then like she wrestles, and then she goes back into the gimmick. But we got something really nutty here. Uh, she defeated. Sheeta to win the AEW women's title for the third time. So Sheeta has it three times. Tony Storm has it three times now. Luther brought out old fashioned platter with various items, including a slipper, jewelry tray, and others. There was a frying pan that was involved, right? Was that a frying pan in her in her trunks? It was like a that what she put in her uh, her rear end was a uh, like a, a jewelry. <laughs> Excuse trunk? me. Just Excuse like me, what those, did she put? That's what I have to say. I didn't want to say it any other way. I didn't know what to say there. So her backside, so, wh- I don't what know. Did, what did she put <laughs> in her backside? Yeah, she put her. I, she put a platter. Too graphic. She put that platter. Yeah, she put a platter back there. Yeah. And, she also uh, used the shoe. Hip attack. Yeah, she did the hip attack with a platter in her butt, uh, in her trunks. And she also mm-hmm. hit her with, uh, it was a jewelry tray. That's what it was, the jewelry tray. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she also hit her with a slipper, and I thought it was interesting. The ref took one slipper, one shoe, and she took the other shoe and hit her, and the ref missed it. I thought that was a unique spot. I mean, listen, I, I, I like the character. I like the gimmick. I don't, I don't necessarily, I didn't love the match, but it was fun. You know? I guess that's all that matters. That's right. all that matters. I enjoyed it. We got that crazy tag match. Ricky Starks and Big Bill defeated FTR, oh. the kings of the Black Throne. La Faccion in Grenoble. I apologize to all our Spanish-speaking audience members. <laughs> you know, I speak multiple languages, and unfortunately, I can't speak Spanish. It's one of the only ones. Uh, I could understand it. I can't speak it at all. And I, for whatever reason, I develop the heaviest American accent when I speak Spanish. I, I don't know why, so my apologies. Uh, Rush and Jarlistico with Preston Vance and Jose the Assistant in a ladder match to retain the tag titles. This was wild. What did you think of this? I, I, there was so many spots here. The, the star in this for me was Brody King. I love yeah. this guy. He, yeah. he really, he was bleeding and just 
fantastic character. Um, the there was a lot of spots with Roosh and Derelistico. Derelistico almost died on that ladder spot. Um, the yeah. one where they had the bridge, and he. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that was brutal. Did they, I forget what they. I forget the name of the move. But there's a specific name for that move that uh, King did to him. That was brutal. At the end of the day, uh, I'm glad uh, Starks and uh, Big Bill kept it. It was great. Yeah, I mean, and you know what? Anybody, any one of them could have won this. You know, whether it was Ricky or Big Bill to retain it, Dax and Wheeler, uh, you know, Malachi and Brody. I would have, anybody could have won this, and I would have said, okay, you know what? That makes sense. Uh, but, you know, Ricky and Bill have the titles again going into the next pay-per-view. We'll see where this goes. I, I, I don't know. You know, the tag division, they've built it up tremendously now. There's a lot of good tag teams again. For a while, it just became like three or four people. But between the guns, uh, you know, obviously Bill and Ricky, FTR, the Bucks, or as, as our producer here, MG, likes to spell them out, the B-O-X, the box, in our show notes. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, Roosh and Jarlistico were the only ones that I didn't think that could win it, but they could have won it. I mean, it wouldn't have affected anything. Uh, I thought this was fun. This was a lot of fun. This one was a little bit of a slowdown. Julia Hart defeated Chris Statlander and blue and sky blue, blue sky, sky blue, uh, to win the TBS title. Sky got new music. Uh, the story was that Julia and sky worked together against Statlander because she's poison. Right? Sky blue. She's been misted. She has that, that disease where she's bleeding blue from her eyes apparently now. Well, what they were doing was trying. They were telling the story that if they're going to win, one of them is going to win, they have to team up. And as a match went on, they started to not team up as yeah. much and went after each other. And that led to the finish. So the finish, the ending was Statlander hit blue with the Saturday Night Fever finish, but Hart threw Statlander aside and stole the pin for the win. I think this was a good pick. I think Julia should have won this title. This was the right decision to make. Uh, she's been tremendously improving. More and more every time we see her out there. Youngest, uh, and it's, youngest champion in uh, AEW history. Really? How old is she? 22. Really? Yep. Good they for had her. Talked about it in the, uh, they talked about it in the uh, scrum wow. after. She's born bit. November 8th, 2001 scary huh <laughs> i'm getting old dude i'm getting old it's it's terrible i i i'm in pain when i when i see that there are people born after things like that yeah. yeah it's wild <laughs> i'm hanging out for dear life guys i'm trying <laughs> uh good for julia uh well deserved i was into this now the next segment who's the big sign e it caused a little bit of a issue over the week. I got reprimanded. Do you know that? Somebody yeah, called told, me. They were, somebody called me. Actually, multiple people contacted me. When one person called me, they yelled at me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, I... Before Tony made the tweet on Wednesday... Thursday? What was that? What day was that? I think it was Wednesday morning before uh, before Dynamite. Wednesday morning. Around Tuesday <laughs> night, I was, uh, I or, or no, uh, Wednesday, I was, I was told that Osprey is heading to AEW. Now, I didn't know that this was a specific announcement. I mean, it just made the most sense because Tony tweeted one of the best, you know, professional wrestlers in the world that's highly respected by everybody uh, was coming in. You know, I got a phone call, and they're like, hey, you know, uh, did you hear who the signee is? And I said, no, who? And they go, Osprey. So I posted a picture of an Osprey, a bird. And then the next day on Matt Men on Friday, you know, we spoke about it. It upset some people. I get it. I normally don't spoil shows, but, you know, I was having a little fun. This is a great signing. So he's going to continue to honor his New Japan contract. And start in February in time of revolution. You know, a lot of this was, and New Japan allowed AEW to negotiate with him. And New Japan, he's still going to partake in New Japan events. It's not that he's done with New Japan when he goes to AEW. You know, his, the travel's better. Uh, WWE actively wanted him. 
I, I, I will say that. They were very... Uh, he comes very highly praised by other talent, and I think they were advocating for him within the company, certain people in that company, because they know the, you know, he, a, a, he's young and he's tremendous and he's on the upside of his career. You know, this is a peak guy in, in the peak of his career. Maybe another year or two, right? The peak would be when he wins a world title. He, he's there, though. You don't get an opportunity generally to do that. Generally for AEW, they're signing guys that are approaching maybe the second half of their career or they're very new. You know, a guy like Jungle Boy, a guy like Darby, Sammy Guevara, Daniel Garcia. You know, the list goes on and on. Uh, Orange Cassidy. I mean, Orange is kind of midway through. His, he's been around for a while. But, like, guys like John Moxley, Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, the Bucks. You know, they're approaching that, that late stage in their career, especially Sting, you know, Edge, Christian. It is unique to get a guy, for any company, to get a guy that is so finished and polished and the peak of their career. Um, I would say this would be equivalent to WWE signing an AJ Styles if he was 10 years younger when they did. Not even 30, this dude. Or signing Okada when he was like 26, 27 years old. This is a great signing. Uh, I, I expect this guy to get that world title in the company. Maybe he gets it at All In next year. The tickets are going on sale. It's a big building to fill. Why not have a hometown guy win the title there? Just putting it out there. And they specifically, he specifically said all, all in when he did that. Why are you dying? What happened to you? You okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Something in my throat real quick. Yeah, it's the gravel you're chewing on, dude. Stop. Stop eating gravel. Uh, I, I thought this was great. I, I, I'm happy that he's there. I think he's going to have some, a, a great series of matches. I think he'll get a little bit more of a prominent positioning. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, one thing that I was, if he went to WWE, you know, that first feud would have to be Ricochet. He would have to work with AJ, right? And then eventually Seth Rollins, you know, these are all just natural programs for the guy, but getting it the other way. I don't have it in the notes, but yeah. during the scrum, they asked Chris Jericho about him coming and he had said a line that I think made a lot of sense. He what said, is He's it's coming here, and he will be able to do the matches he wants to do. And I think that's a big selling point to guys that from AEW well, I, or WWE. You know, he has a negative, though, with that, right? And, and I'll tell me mm -hmm. what you guys think. When you have a guy that is so talented, like, maybe, maybe him not being able to do everything he wants to do, you know, is the way to do it. He has changed his style tremendously. A lot of key veterans have contacted him. He's like, listen, dude, I did what you did. You don't need to do it. Put on some size. You could still be fantastic. You don't need to fly around and take those spots. You know, he had that bad injury a couple of years ago. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Where he fell on yep. his neck? That was not easy. That could have been devastating for him. Now, ever since then, he's, he's kind of pulled back a little bit. Uh, great talent. Fantastic talent. Glad he's there. Uh, the opportunity that he'll get in AEW is going to be far uh, greater as far as you know matches and building his resume with that um the next match we got 30 seconds before we got to go to break i i don't know what this was i mean it was out of control when we come back from break we're going to talk about this in detail swerve strickland hangman page texas death match nana dancing with backup dancers this was out of control. When we come back, we're going to be talking about it. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Sports Byline. Andrew Zarian here for a Sunday edition. Breaking down full gear from last night. I love it when they do a pay-per-view on a, on a Saturday because I could talk about it with you on Sunday. Normally, I'm doing a pre preview show. And then by the time the show is out there and it's downloaded and people are hearing it and people are listening to it, it's old, old news. So I'm enjoying this, hanging out with you on a Sunday night. Let's talk about it. Swerve Strickland, Hangman Page, Texas Deathmatch. Okay, Matt. I don't yes, even sir. know where to begin with, with this. This was out of control, right? It started right off the get-go with that. So 
Okay, so yeah, you mentioned Nana with the backup dancers. I mean, listen, I, Prit's not a. I, and, I, I <laughs> absurd. He's a character. He's absurd. Is right. Yeah. Uh, so that's how, that was the tone. I goes, well, what's this gonna be? And then it started. And when Adam Page didn't even have music, he just ran to the ring, flipped into the ring, went right into a buckshot lariat, yeah. and off and running. And we were off. And this, this man just went was all kinds of ways. A brutal bloodbath. Okay. Let, let I'm gonna I'm just gonna do some key points here, right? In my notes because there's yes. so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, like like Matt said, he didn't even wait for his music. He jumped in a ring, immediately hit a buckshot lariat early on. One of the craziest, I mean, there were two crazy spots. The stapler spot was not something I thought I would see. He took no. a picture that his kid drew, and he stapled well, that was the it. one that. Yeah, that was that, the one when he broke into his house that it, he yeah. uh, pulled off the refrigerator and yes. looked at. So <laughs> he such good picture, callbacks, and he stapled it to his face. Both these guys, bloody mess throughout the entire match. I mean, there was one moment where <sighs> you know pay, uh, Swerve is just gushing blood, dripping okay? right. This is the one where he laid on his back and and. and <laughs> Page lays underneath him and he opens his mouth and the blood is just dripping into his mouth on his face. He spits the blood. Every I've never seen a anything like that. You know, I've been watching professional wrestling uh, my entirety of my life since I was five years old. So for 35 years, I have watched professional wrestling. I do, I've never seen anything like that on a mainstream product. I, I can't even remember. I mean, I'm sure it's been done on an independent show, but I can't even tell you I've seen it in like a CZW match or uh, GCW or even in Japan with those uh, deathmatch promotions. This was, I, I mean, it was so daunting to see, especially for yes. like, you know, a mainstream product. You could hear uh, the I crowd. Wasn't, by the way, you, I'm not mortified by it, right? I'm not gasping. I'm not, I'm yeah. not criticizing, you know, you can make up your mind. I, I know some people are a little squeamish about this stuff. Some people are upset yeah. by it. Uh, you know, I thought it was, they're telling a story. And sometimes a story that they're telling may not be my cup of tea, but I can still appreciate the art of it, right? That's how I saw it. This was bonkers. I did enjoy this match uh, tremendously. Mm -hmm. I think both of these guys, Hangman needed this match and Swerve was made here. I mean, he was getting yes. there. He was getting made. I spoke to someone that is in AEW that has some great insight on this, right? On this program. Uh, I spoke to him early this week. And, you know, the way that it was described to me is that sometimes, like, things get feel hot, you know? Like, the talent feels it, and the people around feels it. Everybody has felt it with these two. They have tremendous chemistry. You know, the break-in story, people were annoyed by it. It made no sense to them. If you're going to... Listen, it's professional wrestling and no, things don't make sense. Movies don't make sense. TV shows don't make sense. Suspension of disbelief is what you need to rely on with things like this. This was just hatred. That promo on Wednesday was hatred. This match was hatred. You know, you look at the, you know, Mox was bleeding in the match uh, with Orange Cassidy. That was a brutal match too. Nothing compared to this. Mm. It got a little wacky at the end. Brian Cage got involved. Uh, Prince Nana. Uh, what did he take? He took a dead. Eye, he took a dead eye through the ringside table. Took his, his dead eye finisher. Yeah. yeah, he took the finisher, mm -hmm. uh, which led to the finish. Which led to the finish. So the finish was Swerve hung him from the ring post with a chain. He hung the hangman. Which Hook. I saw earlier in the match. I saw the chain under the ring. I go, you didn't think they were going to do it? I, somehow. You know, I was very surprised I, I said that they that, used it. I thought it was be more like a whip thing or yeah. something like that. I didn't think it was anything like a hanging. But I, I'm, glad, I'm glad they did it the way that they did. <laughs> you know? I'm glad that they went in the direction of who used it. It yeah. just took the life out of Hangman. Hangman drops to the ground. Ref does a 10 count. Swerve beat Hangman Page in this match. I, I, you know, when I was talking to that person and I said, I, 
I think you guys have built both of them so well the last you know month or so, whatever they've been doing here, that Hangman feels alive again. I, I, I would compare this to when they came back from the pandemic, when they ran that first show at Daly's with like the, the big crowd, and he was in that opener against mm -hmm. Brian Cage. Do you remember the reaction Hangman got? Oh, yeah. He, he got, was, he was, I mean, yeah. when that music hit, they went insane for him. That's how he feels again. And Swerve is at a level that he's never been in this company. Deserve, I mean, deserving he's in the position. This is a, this, I can only imagine. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt, but no, I can no, only no. imagine doing this match with, I don't know how many, 30 staples in your chest and in your back and in your cheeks. Well, there was glass. Swerve had in. There was glass. Yeah, the glass there spot was, was gross. Yeah. Because you know, the they showed wire. Swerve after. He had There's an iron throne. Online spot where he was pulling the uh, pulling those staples out. Those were in his skin the entire match. So man, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. So Paige couldn't answer the ten count match over. Uh, both these guys elevated from this match. Uh, is it my cup of tea? Is this the style of match that I like? No, but I could appreciate the art, and I know that it was great. You know. Sometimes you take yourself out of me and you're like, you know what? I, I could still recognize that this was a fantastic, fantastic story they told. Golden Jets, Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho defeated the Young Bucks. Now, there was, there was a couple issues for me with this match. You're, you're coming off of this crazy insanity. It was slow for people to get into it, right? Yeah. It was very mm -hmm. slow for people to get into it. They got into it towards the end. There were CM Punk chants, anti-CM Punk chants, uh, anti-Buck chants happening. The story is the Bucks are heels. Yep. Did I love this match? I think it was fine. Maybe the placement affected it a little bit more. Um, did this match need to be on the show? I don't know. I got into it towards the end, but in the beginning, I was like, man, I'm so taken out from the, from the previous match. It could have just been that it was the placement. See, this... I thought that they would do the match they did on Wednesday on the show, but seeing what we saw with the match we just talked about, I can see yeah. why they didn't. Yeah. Um, and this was, you know, to set up the tag titles. So it looks yeah. like uh, Kenny and Chris are going to stick together for a while and go for the we'll tag see. titles. Yeah, let's see what they do. Mm -hmm. Before we go into the main event, I want to also talk about this. The Continental Classic, okay? There's a stipulation now added to this. Earlier in the show, Eddie, uh, Eddie Kingston put his Ring of Honor title and his New Japan Strong Openweight Championship on the line in the tournament. The winner of the Continental Classic will become the first ever AEW Continental Champion, meaning the Continental Classic winner will hold three titles and become the first ever Triple Crown Champion in the company. I don't know. So I reached out to numerous people about is this another title is this a commemorative title like you know they had that owen hart championship then they had mm -hmm. no it was yeah. a title that they presented so if you are the winner of this do you have all three titles do you have one title are they removing a like. title i don't believe they're removing a title i think they're adding a title yeah, I could be wrong. What I'm I, wondering I, is I, this morning. I don't know if you listen to Observer Radio. I believe Dave said they're they're adding and removing to, but I don't. I, I may okay. have misheard. I'm not. It's not. I, I I I'm not sure. My only my only question is how does the New Japan aspect of this go? Because you're taking one of their titles. Are they are they just giving it up, saying we don't want it anymore? Well, it's, a triple, or it's a triple crown. Is this so person? Or is this person going to defend on New Japan shows as well? I, mean, I would imagine. So maybe it's right? the first crossover to uh, two company title, which yeah. could be pretty cool. Here's the current list of uh, contenders in this. Brian Danielson, Andrade, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe so far. You know what? That's a nice four people. Let's see who else. Because you're going to have to add people from New Japan if this is the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship also being on here. We'll see what happens. I, I'm very curious. It begins on Wednesday, the tournament. I'm sure we'll get a list of other competitors also. Let's go into the main event here. MJF defeated Switchblade Jay White. The story was early. There was the segment that, that we mentioned. Before the bell rang, ambulance sirens could be heard. MJF came back to the building. 
Uh, everybody was saying this was getting Attitude Era-ish, Era-ish with, with the vibe of this, how, the, you know, the ambulance and he's coming out, he's limping out. The story was that his knee was done. He couldn't stand. He couldn't withhold the pain. In the end, uh, th these guys had a great match, by the way. Uh, I, I, you know, would I have liked to see them without, you know, the injury angle uh, and have a fantastic match? Absolutely. But I think for whatever they had built here, Max did a tremendous job. Uh, the story was his knee. The end, so Adam Cole give MJF the diamond ring, but White got it instead. MJF hit a low blow, then used the ring uh, to get the pin. Shenanigans. A lot of shenanigans in this match. But MJF, still the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champion, still the AEW World Champion, and everybody's gunning to him. The story here is this man is getting dissected by having injuries, attacks. Everybody's coming after that title. Look at the list. You have Adam, uh, Jay White. You have Adam Cole still lingering, right? You know, he, that, that, that was never settled in, in some capacity. Samoa Joe, Wardlow, and whoever so else. So in the media scrum, and so in the media scrum, uh, MJF specifically said that, uh, well, yeah, he helped me, but I never agreed to actually, uh, you know, honoring it. It's not in paper and not in writing. Yeah. So. Yeah. In the scrum. In the scrum. Oh, by the way, overall, really fun pay-per-view. Very much enjoyed it. Different, but fun. Uh, he, they, he thanked Adam Cole in the scrum and called Jay White a, a, a bad word. Uh, he said his leg was busted up. He made a promise to Adam Cole to defend the ROH title and why he accepted Joe's help. He also hinted that he may not grant, grant the title shot. Interesting. Uh, Will Ospreay said that he signed with AEW because it was a decision, best decision for his family. Uh, he was looking forward to a match with Andrade, Miro, and also MJF and Jay White. He also said he wants to do a third Kenny Omega match. He said he, he wanted to hear everybody out before he signed with AEW, but ultimately made the decision for his family because of the travel, and they want to stay where they stay. Guys, this was a blast, this show. This was a blast. When we come back from break, I got a couple more things to touch on from the scrum. We'll be right back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes of the show here on Sports Byline. A couple more things to add. From the scrum, Tony Khan, the pay-per-view numbers were currently trending higher than last month's Wrestle Dream event. So generally, what is it? 100,000, 120,000, 130,000? You know, that's Somewhere a good number. There, yeah. That's a great number for them. He talked about the Continental Classic Tournament, comparing it to European football. He said that the tournament would indeed unify the Ring of Honor title, Continental title, and the New Japan Strong title. So it's a unification, but... You could always ununify those titles, too. So we'll see what happens. Is this one title replacing three? Is this the man holds three belts and it's considered one? We'll find out. He said Brian Danielson injury isn't as bad as they initially thought, though he'd be out longer. Thought they would be. He would be out longer. He's back. Khan also said he had a great conversation with Mercedes Monet and would love to have her in AEW. Ronda Rousey also debuted for Ring of Honor. Shockingly, uh, per Fightful, this was a handshake agreement. We'll see if he's gonna, she's going to continue there. Uh, you know, she has a reason why she's not in WWE. She said it was a family matter. She, she, there's something going on there. Positive or negative? I don't know. I have no idea, and I'm not going to speculate. But uh, the reason why she was there is because it was in L.A., and it's easy. She doesn't want to travel. And listen, maybe do a one-off, you know? That, that might help. That might be something. I would love to see Ronda there. I have no problem with her. Also, Survivor Series next week. Unfortunately, we did not have enough time to talk about this today. But next week, we'll do a, uh, we'll do a, um, it's a Saturday show, so we're going to be talking about it. It's going to be great. Guys, this was a blast. You can tweet me at Andrew Zarian. Talk to me about the show. Give me your thoughts. We're going to be ne next week. We'll be back with Survivor Series and everything else happening in the world of professional wrestling. We'll see you all next time on Wrestling Observer Live. Take care.